Judge Eileen Cannon, the federal judge in the Southern District of Florida who Donald Trump appointed and who is presiding over the Mar-a-Lago document case, just made a major mistake in an order that she just issued. And I believe special counsel Jack Smith is going to make her pay. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Two orders were issued at basically the same exact time in the two federal criminal prosecutions of Donald Trump. One in the Southern District of Florida, a order was issued regarding SEPA, Classified Information Procedure Act Section 4, by Judge Eileen Cannon, the judge appointed by Donald Trump, who back in 2022 was overturned twice by the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. And I believe her order is erroneous, that her order, I think, can and I think may indeed be appealed by special counsel Jack Smith, given that he would be entitled to an interlocutory appeal. And now she's finally made an appealable order. So we've got Judge Cannon's order in the Southern District of Florida. Then we've got Judge Tanya Chutkin's order in the Washington, D.C. federal court involving special counsel Jack Smith's criminal prosecution of Donald Trump for his attempt to overthrow the results of the 2020 election. The uh, Washington, D.C. federal case is set for trial in March of 2024. And as of now, Judge Eileen Cannon's case involving Donald Trump's theft of national defense information and obstruction of justice is scheduled for May of 2024. Both judges made orders at exactly the same time or within minutes of each other. And I think it was, by and large, a coincidence that these orders dropped that close in time to each other, although nothing's ever a coincidence. But they both involve SEPA Section 4 issues, Classified Information Procedure Act issues. And SEPA, Classified Information Procedures Act, is the procedures for the handling of classified information in cases where classified information is at issue. So, for example, in the Southern District of Florida case, it involves Donald Trump stealing national defense information, which includes classified information, highly sensitive information, sensitive compartmented information. And even in the uh, Washington, D.C. case, which does not like overtly a deal with classified information. There are still certain issues that may involve national security assessments regarding the January 6th insurrection, foreign government intervention, uh, and attempts to try to aid and assist Donald Trump's overthrowing of the 2020 election and to try to uh, get voters to vote for Trump or to vote a certain way. So there may be national security assessments about interference as well that may involve classified information. And one of the things that SEPA Section 4 addresses is a form of blackmail called gray mail, for example, where a criminal defendant tries to say, well, I'm entitled under the Sixth Amendment and my other constitutional rights to a public trial, so I'm bringing all this classified information before the public, even if it jeopardizes the national security interests of the United States of America. Or you could just dismiss the charges against me and the national security information won't be disclosed to the public. That's called gray mailing. It's like a form of black mailing. And so this statute called SEPA, which is well established, is utilized all the time. This is not controversial, but when it comes to Judge Eileen Cannon, everything is to her novel, new, controversial, and she tries to contort the meaning of very basic statutes. But SEPA addresses issues like gray mail and black mail. SEPA addresses these issues and basically says, okay, how are classified documents handled? Where can classified documents be viewed? They have to be viewed in SCIFs, sensitive compartmented information facilities. Can the criminal defendant have access to these documents? What are the conditions for their access to this uh, classified information? How are the documents handled? How do they get transferred from a SCIF to the courtroom? You have to hire people 
who are uh, security officers whose sole, jo so, whose sole job, almost like an independent monitor, is to deal with classified information in cases that involve SEPA. So there's a well-established SEPA, Classified Information Procedures Act regime, that deals with these issues. And one specific provision of SEPA is SEPA Section 4, which basically says, while yes, it is true that in criminal cases, a defendant is entitled to all of this all of this documentation that may be exculpatory and all of this document that may be reasonably calculated to be exculpatory entitled to all this discovery when it comes to classified information we have to balance the national security concerns with the criminal defendants due process concerns and how do we balance that out are there situations where the government can delete certain documents from discovery that are highly classified documents and perhaps replace them with summaries or descriptions or some other methodology that does not harm our national security interests? Can the government withhold certain classified documents that may not be squarely relevant and exculpatory in the case? And who's the one who makes that decision? Because if you show the classified documents to the defendant or the defense lawyer, you can't unring the bell because they've already seen the document. So what SEPA Section 4 has, it's very clearly written in SEPA Section 4 is a procedure whereby ex parte and in camera, the federal judge is to review certain documents which the federal government's state pursuant to SEPA Section 4 should be deleted and withheld from the discovery that they turn over to the criminal defendant in a specific case. And so ex parte in camera, by its very terms, means that the judge with the government, without the criminal defendant present, makes that determination and it's up to the judge on their own to make that call, not in an adversarial process, which normally takes place, but because we're dealing with highly classified documents, it's done what's called in camera, I-N camera, and it's italicized, and what that just basically means is um, without the criminal defendant or without a defendant present, and ex parte, meaning that the government moves pursuant to SEPA Section 4 to uh, achieve, you know, to, to get the court to make a determination. Ultimately, if the court goes, you know what, this isn't under SEPA Section 4, then the uh, criminal defendant can get access to it through the normal SEPA procedures, which are governed by a protective order under the Classified Information Procedures Act, um, Section 3 of SEPA, which sets forth the protective order. So if you want to just think about this, there's a protective order, which is SEPA Section 3, which, as I said earlier in the video, governs the terms of how classified documents will be handled in a case. And then even like above, that, think about it like this, there's another layer, which is SEPA Section 4, which is where the government says, these documents are so sensitive that the SEPA Section 4 protects even more than the protective order, and it's a procedure where we don't turn it over, these records pursuant to the protective order. Instead, we go to the judge directly through this in-camera, meaning just the judge alone, ex parte uh, proceeding, and the judge makes the call. So in both of the cases, the Southern District of Florida case before Judge Eileen Cannon and the Washington, D.C federal case, the government invoked its SEPA Section 4 procedure rights under SEPA, well-established statute, well-established precedent. And here's where Judge Cannon and here's where Judge Chutkin reached very different rulings. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Using silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. So you get better sleep every night. These sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. 
No more gross odors. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some five-star hotels. Miracle sheets are the perfect gift for your spouse, friends, or family who doesn't want better sleep and luxurious feeling bed sheets. And since these come with three free towels, you get two gifts in one, just in time for the holidays. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Go to trymiracle.com slash legal AF to try it today or gift it to someone special this holiday season. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Save over 40%. And if you use our promo legal AF at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash legalaf and use the code legalaf to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash legalaf to treat yourself, a friend, or loved one this holiday season. Because Donald Trump's lawyers and the lawyers for the criminal defendants in the Southern District of Florida case, they want access to it. They're saying their argument, the criminal defendants argument in both of the cases is that SEPA section four has these exceptions and there shouldn't be the case where the judge just gets to see it. They should have access to it as well. And here's where Judge Cannon and Judge Chutkin reached very different orders. And I think in Judge uh, Chutkin's order, it really does describes the issues here very plainly. Judge Chutkin says, at the outset, it bears emphasis that the defense identifies Trump, identifies no case in which any court has ordered the relief that they seek here, and this court is aware of none. There is good reason for the lack of precedent. As SEPA's House report explains, quote, since the government is seeking to withhold classified information from the defendant, an adversary hearing with the defense knowledge would defeat the very purpose of the discovery rules. It's about withholding classified information because a federal judge deems it so sensitive that the defense lawyer shouldn't be able to know about it at all, which is what makes this different than normal procedure. And who enacted this Congress? This is a law. This is a statute, SEPA, to protect our national security. So that's what Judge Chutkin says there. And Judge Chutkin says, rather than this court rather than Judge Chutkin, undertake the unprecedented and likely futile course that Trump is requesting, this court has followed the established procedure of holding an ex parte hearing with defense counsel to better understand whether the withheld information is relevant and helpful. That process not adversarial litigation is the appropriate course for resolving the SEPA Section 4 motion here. So Judge Chutkin's basically saying SEPA Section 4 is very clear that the procedure is that the lawyers don't get access to this information, that instead the government files with the court ex parte in camera, and then the court can separately then hold a hearing with the defense lawyers and ask questions without showing the defense counsel the records and the defense counsel shouldn't see any portion of the records, that the law is very clear on that. Now, Judge Cannon does the exact opposite, basically. And Judge Cannon gives her own analysis of SEPA Section 3 and SEPA Section 4. And what Judge Cannon says in her ruling is that because SEPA Section 3 mentions both defendant and defendant's attorney, this is what she says in the ruling, and that those words are specifically in SEPA Section 3 when it relates to a protective order, because SEPA Section 4 just uses the word defendant and doesn't say defendant's lawyer, she extrapolates that SEPA Section 4 then must mean that Trump's lawyers and the other defendant's lawyers can get access to classified information 
subject to the SEPA Section 3 protective order rights. That, in other words, what Judge Cannon is saying is that SEPA Section 4 doesn't provide an extra layer of protection, which is what it does because we're dealing with highly sensitive classified information. What Cannon claims is that SEPA Section 4 is basically buried within SEPA Section 3's protective order, which would make no sense. Why would you, if that was the case, Judge Cannon, you would just have SEPA Section 3. Why would Congress create its own Section 4 and then why would the procedures for SEPA Section 4 be ex parte in camera, which means no lawyer present for the defense? That's by its terms, the process of SEPA Section 4 excludes the defense lawyers because, as you saw Judge Chutkin say in Washington, D.C., there's good reason for that. It's because the government wants to withhold classified documents by making these national security arguments. And Judge Cannon disagrees with that. It's something to disagree with. Like That's what the statute says. And one of the things I think to point out is, number one, Judge Chutkin's order is about five pages. Judge Cannon's is 15. And Judge Cannon... The self-importance that reeks from this when she doesn't know what she's talking about, she acts like she's a Supreme Court justice in this, parsing through, rather than looking at what the precedent is, her own interpretation about SEPA Section 4's relation with SEPA Section 3. Judge Cannon, you've never done a SEPA case before. I mean, this is so insane that a judge who's never done a SEPA case is giving you her statutory interpretation of what SEPA Section 3's interrelationship is with SEPA Section 4, that is so wrong instead of just saying, here's the process I'm gonna follow. It's called SEPA Section 4. And so on that analysis, what Judge Cannon says is, the government needs to just simply go along with the protective order SEPA Section 3 provisions and on a case-by-case -case basis, rather than invoking the SEPA Section 4 procedures, if you want to withhold from the lawyers of Donald Trump and his co-defendants, bring a separate motion to me. Otherwise, you have to go through the protective order provisions. And that's, as I said, incorrect because SEPA Section 4 provides an extra layer of protection. So Judge Chutkin got it right. Judge Cannon got it completely wrong. Both orders came in within minutes of each other on Wednesday. So where do we go from here and why is this important, Ben? All right, you've talked my head off about SEPA this, SEPA that. Why, why should I care? Because I think this is an opportunity now for special counsel Jack Smith to finally bring an appeal because this is a final order by Judge Cannon believe special counsel Jack Smith is entitled to interlocutory review. I believe Judge Cannon's uh, order here is so off base, is so out of touch with SEPA law that the 11th Circuit will, uh, I think, agree if special counsel Jack Smith brings us on an interlocutory basis that her view of SEPA is so off base. I think she will get reversed again on an expedited appeal by the 11th Circuit if special counsel Jack Smith goes this way. And I think that could have bigger ramifications on her ability to stay on a case like this, if not this one, when she makes the next mistake. But this is a dangerous precedent that she is setting by basically vitiating SEPA Section 4's protections about how our classified information needs to be handled by subsuming it and burying it in SEPA Section 3 protective order, which completely contradicts the will of Congress and places our national security in jeopardy. And so you see her 15-page order, Chutkin's five-page order, where Chutkin's like, okay, it's obvious, ex parte, in camera, here's what it means. And if it meant the opposite, then why would Congress pass a law that says in camera? Uh, and why would Congress make these distinctions between classified documents or others? Why, why is there a section four in the first place? Another observation that I just made, and I'll close with this, is how Judge Chutkin refers to um, the government as the government, and Judge Cannon refers to the government as OSC, Office of Special Counsel. 
And it just shows you the framework within which Judge Cannon views everything as hostile towards special counsel Jack Smith's team. So that's the latest update on these two orders. This is why I think Jack Smith now will take the opportunity, I believe, to file an appeal of Judge Cannon's order. And you see how Judge Chutkin just dealt with it matter-of-factly, five pages, easy, because this is precedent. Judge Cannon, unlike Judge Chutkin, did the opposite and did a 15-page contortion of words and statutes versus here's just what Section 4 of SEPA says. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 2 million subscribers thanks to your support. Have a great day. At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy, and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right. Gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.